Hey, it's Zana. Welcome back to Solar Trip Podcast. And if you're new here, hi, I'm an independent music artist. I write, record, and produce my own music. And I also film these weekly Solar Trip Podcast videos and audios if you're listening on the podcast apps. And we just talk about all things spirituality and metaphysics and occult science and all of that kind of stuff. So this episode I'm actually filming before Christmas, but by the time you watch this, it will probably be after Christmas. So I hope everyone had the best time spending it with their family and friends and all of that stuff. Just, I mean, knowing me, I will be eating a lot of food. That's probably the main thing I'm gonna be doing because I do understand where Christmas actually came from. And maybe I'll make a video on that, but Young Pharaoh really broke it down and I was just like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> so I don't really care to celebrate the actual, t like, what's it called, like the actual ceremony type thing of what Christmas is, like the tradition of it, but I do like to just be with family and eat a load of food and all of that stuff, you know. So anyway, this video, I wanted to talk about the ego, the body and the subconscious mind because I did make a video about this on my YouTube last year, which I have taken down because I took down so many of them because they were just really awkward and like uncomfortable. Even when I would watch them back, I'm just like, oh. But that is just the process when you're like trying to film videos and stuff, you tend to get a bit nervous and you have to find your feet and find what works for you. So I did take that video down, but I wanted to come back to that topic and talk about it again because I feel like it's been a whole last year, literally a whole year. So my understanding of the ego and what it is, is much deeper, I want to say. Like I feel like I really, not fully understand it, but I feel like I have a better perspective and can actually like express and communicate that perspective a lot easier than what I could last year. Because if you have been following me for a while, you know that one of my like struggles is to externalise what I think and feel, you know, like I can understand it myself, but then when it comes to actually communicating it, it's just a whole different ball game. So for this video, we're going to dive into the ego and the human body because I actually realised how connected they are and for a while I kind of felt like, I mean the ego is obviously the mind, like we're talking about the ego mind, so it's an aspect of your consciousness or an aspect of your mind, but it's also actually so connected to your body and it never occurred to me really before how connected it is because when you think about it, like ego is your instincts like it's your it's your survival mode it's literally how you know not to do certain things because it can cause a dangerous situation so like you know not to walk too close to the edge of like a cliff or a swimming pool because you could fall off or fall into the water you know like it's that kind of I want to say intuitive but I guess it's more of an instinct it's that kind of aspect of your mind that knows when there's danger it knows how to survive it knows when you're hungry it knows when you're cold or when you're too hot you know like it can tell you these things but then i also realized that one way that it actually tells you these things is through your body because your body will give you sensations which is the five senses that we have you know the sight the smell the touch the taste and hear <laughs> i don't think about that then but through those senses which are your body's, um, like it's your body's way of communicating with you. It communicates through those senses, but it's also a part of your ego mind. So I realized just how connected they are, that when you're feeling too hot, your body starts to sweat. So it's like your mind knows that you're too hot, but your body's telling you and communicating it to you as well. So then it kind of confirms the thoughts that you're thinking about like I feel like if you didn't sweat or something then you wouldn't know that you're too hot or if you didn't if your temperature didn't rise and you didn't feel that you wouldn't know so really you can think something but without that physical sensation you wouldn't actually know it like it wouldn't be confirmed you wouldn't be able to feel it so I realized just how connected the body and the ego mind are and that they're not something to try and get rid of because often in spirituality and stuff we talk about like I always say integrate the ego but some people say transcend the ego what other phrases are there like remove the ego let go of the ego get past the ego but really 
you can't because it's a part of your body and it's a part of its natural instincts to do that you know like to communicate to you so that you know when you're too hot so that you know when you're hungry you know when you're thirsty you know when you need certain things because that's what the vessel needs like the vessel literally is an animal you know it's a bit like having a pet because your dog or your cat or whatever animal that you have whatever pet you have they have to be able to like communicate what they need to you and your body has to do the same thing so that you can survive literally so that you can exist here on earth because if it didn't tell you that you wouldn't eat and then the vessel would just die and there would be no point so like you literally need an ego it's not something that you can get rid of because you need it in order to live here and in order to exist and experience the soul's purpose that it wants to experience but it has to keep the vessel alive you know so like even though you could think that the purpose is the most important thing i kind of feel like actually your basic human needs are the most important thing before your purpose because if you if you don't fulfill like sleep if you don't get enough sleep if you don't eat the right foods to make your body feel alive then literally you can't get anything done you can't achieve or fulfill your like soul's mission and like sometimes when I'm hungry I literally don't want to talk to people you know so like if a part of your purpose is to experience connections you're not really going to experience them in the full joy and like the full capacity of what you could if you're not fulfilling your basic needs literally so actually having an ego is like one of the main things that we need and even me just talking about it right now is making me realize how much we do actually need it and it's an a necessity like it's a part of the human experience and it's not something that we want to get rid of because you need to know when there's danger around you know, those instincts kick in. You know when something feels off when you walk in a room. You know when, especially us women, we are constantly having to listen to that instinct when we like, and a part of that is intuition too, but like, especially when we're out on our own or something and there's different people like we have to be aware of who's around us because there are some dodgy people around here you know and real horrific situations happen so like we're always having to listen to that intuition and also that instinct of survival to know what's safe and what isn't and what we need to do and and like be able to be careful and keep ourselves safe so it's not something that we can get rid of and it's not something that we even should want to get rid of because literally it's something that's serving you <laughs> like it has a purpose and it has a benefit and it's actually helping us so I think this also comes into the fact that like we should love and appreciate our body because that's what it is and obviously the media and social media as well and like celebrity Hollywood all of this stuff pushes the agenda of us hating our bodies and needing to change them needing them to look like this and look like that and be like this and all of that stuff and it's something that I struggle with too but like your body literally is serving such a bigger purpose than the aesthetic of what it looks like you know and so I don't know. I think when you understand that and you start to realise that, it can make you just appreciate it just simply for telling you that it's cold, <laughs> you know, or simply telling you that it needs to eat. It can make you just feel a bit more grateful for it and kind of more loving towards it, you know, and literally treat it like it's your pet or like it's your child or like it's a gift that you've been given because it actually is, you know, it's only here for a certain amount of time and then it decays, it dies, it goes back into the ground, into Mother Earth and our soul ca continues on because we just transform into another form, you know, like energy never dies so it just shifts into a different form but the body does die so it's a temporary thing and we should be actually quite grateful for the fact that we get to experience this world for the time that we do in the body that we do because then we can go into another life and have a completely different body you know so I don't know I just realized how actually they're very important and it's so connected to the ego mind and because the ego mind literally is the thoughts it's thoughts that's all that mind is, that's all that consciousness is, it's just thoughts. So you have your body given all of these sensations and then you have the thoughts that correspond with that, you know, so then you understand what you need in like a human basic level of survival. 
So the subconscious mind is the aspect of yourself. Like I really struggled with trying to grasp what it meant because we're talking about consciousness. So it's just thoughts, it's just data, it's just information, it's just literally like consciousness, it's just the mind. But it can almost sound like external, especially when you talk about the ego and the subconscious being two separate things, but really they're both a part of the same thing, they're both a part of consciousness. You know, that's how we get oneness, like everything is consciousness, none of it is separate. So your subconscious mind is literally your as your aspect, your access to the higher parts of yourself that aren't here in this physical reality, the parts of yourself that are outside of time and space and physical matter, you know, so like it literally is the pure, I can't even put into words, like complete information like everything that you could ever possibly need to know is your subconscious is your higher self is source is god is love is everything you know and like you have access to that because it's a part of you so it's a part of your mind it's a part of your consciousness it's a part of who you are because you are consciousness if that makes any sense it's like your higher self so that means that that's where infinite potential is and that's where all of your past lives, all of your experiences, all of your memories, all of your thoughts exist and that means that your past and your future exist there too so you have access to that which means that whenever you come to like a decision that you need to make the answer is already there because the experience has already happened because the future is not linear, it's already existing right now in the same space because it's not linear you know and it's not limited to space and time so like you can access that part of yourself that already knows which is your intuition and then you also have your ego mind which is more of the survival nature and the instinctual nature so like you work with both rather than trying to get rid of one and like put the other one on a pedestal really you need both because that's the whole purpose of having them is duality like they coincide together and you use both of them to be able to thrive here on earth you know sometimes it can feel like you need to bring your human up to the spiritual or bring the spiritual down to the human but really they're both like existing at the same time and you have access to both of them so you have access to like the spiritual higher aspect of yourself whilst you're here in a lower denser human experience and then when you tap into both of those you now can navigate the world where like you know when you need to survive you know when something is like you need to be more cautious and pay attention and more observant and then you also know when to just let go and trust you know like it's having the balance between both parts of yourself which I guess you could kind of say is masculine and feminine really because we all have both masculine and feminine and I don't know why but I'm kind of feeling like the ego mind is more masculine and like the higher self is more feminine but I don't actually know if that's true I'm just kind of feeling that based on like the type of energy that it is is like one's more animalistic which is masculine and one's more intuitive which is feminine so it would kind of make sense if that was true but I don't know don't think it really matters but anyway <laughs> So it's just a case of literally balancing both and integrating both, which means understanding it. It means like literally having to sit with yourself and understand how your mind works and the thought patterns that it comes up with, because then you can determine where they're coming from. Is it a need to survive? Is it out of judgment and out of fear? Or is it out of love and compassion and the truth? You know, because a lot of times our um, thought patterns that are based in ego, you know they're based in ego and instinct and survival because they're repeating thought patterns based in fear and based in past experience, you know, or experiences that you've witnessed, not necessarily been through yourself, but maybe you've witnessed them in films and stuff. So you now fear it and you feel like it could potentially happen to you. So I feel like the way to kind of tell the difference between your intuition and an instinct or like survival is literally the fact that it's survival. It's the fact that it's coming from fear and it's coming from uncertainty and a lack of faith. Whereas your intuition is like, it's like a knowing, it's like a 
I feel like it comes when you literally put it all into perspective, like when you see all of it, so you actually see the fear-based pattern that the ego mind is saying as well, and then you can kind of step away from that and see the higher perspective and the bigger picture and realise that everything is all in service of you, and then you can like trust from your heart because I guess that's really where your intuition lies is in your heart so it's like does this serve me you know does this feel good do I like this is it something that's in line with my purpose and like what I want to do and why I'm here and what I am like literally asking yourself those questions I feel like will really help get to because I feel like intuition sounds a bit external. It sounds like a God, a separate being, is going to, like, plant that seed in you. And that's not really what it is. It's, like, it's when you're in tune with yourself. It's when you understand yourself and what you're here to do. When you understand your mission. When you understand, like... So, like, for me, I'll just say from my own experience, because I feel like that's way easier to explain. But, like, if I was going to decide whether... A situation was right for me or not I would be like okay why am I here like what is my purpose you know and I would ask myself that question and be like okay so if my purpose is to remember it is to like literally remember as much as I can and then experience this world try to as brother panic calls it um be lighter than a feather like to try and let go of judgment, let go of attachment to the human experience, let go of all of these heavy things. If that's my purpose and the reason why I'm here and to create, to be a creator, literally in the sense of creating music and stuff, but also in the sense of like taking charge of my life and creating it how I want it. If that's my purpose, then is this thing in alignment with that? Is this thing allowing me to do that? Is it allowing me to create? Is it allowing me to feel good? Is it allowing me to be in my heart centre and like feel in love all the time? Or does it make me feel uncomfortable? Does it make me feel fear? And I literally feel like once you understand yourself and you know the difference between being in your heart centre and feeling fear, when you know the difference between the two, then you'll easily be able to you may not even be easily be able to choose, but you'll easily be able to trust, you know? Like, it may be hard for you to choose and make the decision, but I feel like the part of you that will then, like, trust and just let go and stop trying to choose, stop trying to rush it, stop trying to force it and just let go, that will be a bit easier. And then the decision will kind of naturally unfold and the circumstance will change for you, around you, because of you, because you've let go, you know, it'll become clearer which one you should choose because you've let go and you've let the situation unfold a bit more and now you understand which one you need to choose because things have unfolded a bit further because you've relaxed, <laughs> you relax and let go of control and then things start to kind of unravel a little bit more. But... Yeah, I think it's just really about getting in touch with yourself and knowing who you are, which literally, because to me, when I used to hear that before, I'd be like, what the fuck does that even mean? To me, that literally means to actually, I feel like I say literally and actually so much. What is wrong with me? <laughs> anyway, I feel like it's the, to spend time with yourself to really spend time with yourself in silence, not needing all of these distractions, not needing social media to be on your phone constantly, not needing to be watching TV constantly, not needing to consume constantly, but to just be still and just hear your thoughts and just let them run wild. And when you do that, you start to really hear yourself. Like it's about paying attention, about listening more than consuming which I swear that's the same thing, but listening to yourself more than listening to the external and other people and consuming what they're doing, you have to listen to yourself. And when you do that and you spend more time with yourself, you'll get more comfortable and then you'll start to notice and understand where your intuition lies and where it's coming from because you'll feel it, you'll feel it in your heart, like you'll just know. And it sounds silly, but honestly, you will just know because you'll know yourself and you'll know what feels right for you. Like it's, you pay attention to your body because it's an overall sensation. It's not just thoughts. It's like, how does your body feel? How does it react? Because it does tell you when you when it's hungry and stuff, but it also tells you when somebody feels off, when something feels wrong, it will tell you. 
so and you need that you need that part of yourself so like using the ego using the body and using your higher self like your connection with your higher self all of those combined is how you literally thrive here rather than just survive you know so yes I hope this video was helpful and made sense I do feel like I rambled again <laughs> but let's not judge myself okay <laughs> So thank you so much for listening and watching. I really, really appreciate you. And I hope you have the best Christmas and New Year. I'm not even sure what day I'm going to release this. So it may already be New Year. But all of my links to my social media and my music and everything like that will be in the description box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Oh, yeah, think you like me. Yeah, I'm icy, cooling in the white tea. Oh, yeah, I think you like me. Yeah, I'm icy, cooling in the white tea. Oh, yeah, I think you might. I'm the thing you like me, my range all white. Oh, yeah, I think you might. I'm the thing you like me, my range all white.